Now you discussed continuous functions in your calculus class and you've probably seen the idea before but it's very important. Now the word continuous comes from the Latin continuus meaning uninterrupted or hanging together. The, the slight twist that we're going to have now is that we've got we've got to generalize the notion of one-dimensional continuity to higher dimensional continuity. So definition. f from rn into rm is continuous and I'll often abbreviate that with CTS because it's much shorter at x naught in rn if for any sequence xk where k goes up to 1 to infinity with the limit as k approaches infinity of xk equal x naught and uh, more more precisely this means that the norm or the the distance between these two guys is shrinking to zero as k approaches infinity so this is the Euclidean distance in Rn as k approaches infinity this is gonna go to zero so the distance between these things is getting small well, we have that so if this sequence is essentially going to x naught but at infinity then it's continuous here if for all these sequences we have the limit as k approaches infinity of the function evaluated at xk is going to be equal to the function evaluated at x naught. So this means that I'm getting close, closer and closer to my, my input in Rn, and my output is getting closer and closer and closer. Right, and so this is going to be the same as f of x naught minus f of x k in Rm that's going to zero as k approaches infinity. So the distance, so basically it means that the distance here, if the distance here is shrinking, then the distance in R, of the function values in Rm is shrinking. And that's what continuity really is in these spaces. So let's, let's get a quick example. Our favorite function, f of x, y, is equal to x squared plus y squared. Uh, is continuous at the point zero zero. Well, it's continuous everywhere, but it's really easy to show that it's continuous at zero. So suppose we have this vector or the sequence of vectors a k, b k, going to zero as k approaches infinity. So the vector zero zero rather, right? So the vector zero zero. So that means that the distance between these two, which is just the length of this guy, is going to zero. So writing that down, we have the Euclidean length of this guy in R2, which is equal to the square root, right? We have a formula for this of ak squared plus bck squared. That's going to zero as k approaches infinity. Well, so then we just we just plug in essentially the definition. When we look at the distance between these things. We have that. We want to show that f at x zero, which is zero zero, minus f of a k b k. Right where I'm still in, I'm I'm in one dimensional space now. I wanted to show that that's going to zero, right? So this is r one. 
well, what's the distance in R1? It's just the absolute value, right? And what's the value at f0, 0? Well, it's 0, because it's 0 squared plus 0 squared is 0. So ultimately, this just boils down to the absolute value of the function evaluated here. So it's the absolute value of ak squared plus bk squared. But this is already positive, so this is just equal to ak squared plus bk squared. And this is the same as square root ak squared plus bk squared times the square root of ak squared plus bk squared, right? Well, by hypothesis, these guys are going to zero, right? So this guy is going to zero as k approaches infinity, and this guy is going to zero. And if I multiply two things that are going to zero together, then they just still go to zero, right? And so that concludes showing that I'm continuous at that point for that function, which is great. So continuity is preserved by a lot of different operations. But in particular, it's preserved by very simple operations. So suppose f and g from rn into rm are continuous. At x in Rn. So they're both continuous at the same point in Rn. Then f plus g, f minus g, and f in a product with g are also continuous at x. Right, so this is this is a new function from Rn to Rm. This is a new function from Rn to Rm, and this is a function, a new function from Rn into R1. And we're saying that all these are continuous at x if I have continuity up here, and that's really nice. And the proof, the proof basically take, takes advantage of the triangle inequality. So this is why the triangle inequality is very very important so at least the proof for f plus g so let's do let's do the proof for f plus g because the other ones are uh, well f minus g is basically the same and f f dotted with g is really complicated right but f plus g we can understand that and and in some sense you can kinda make sense of all this right if uh, if I've got a sequence getting close to x in Rn then these numbers should roughly get close. So, so there's a good intuition as to why this should be. But I'm going to show you roughly the idea of like a formal proof, right? This is this isn't really a formal proof. This is a rigorous proof, right? We're not actually going to go down to second order logic in order to demonstrate this. But so, what does it mean to be continuous? Well, since I've got continuity, I know that whenever x k is approaching x in Rn, this goes to zero, and same thing for G, right? And this is for all XK, sequences XK approaching X, and now I'm going to start getting rid of the, uh, the arrows because it starts to get complicated. Well, so I look at the, the new function, f plus g. So f plus g evaluated at x minus f plus g evaluated at xk. And now I'm looking at, actually this should be an rm, right? rm. So this is an rm as well. Well, what's that equal to, right? Well, this is just going to be f of x plus g of x, and this will be minus f of xk minus g of x. So I'm just going to regroup that into f of x minus f of xk plus g of x minus g of xk in Rm. 
Right, so this is for any, any sequence, I'm just looking at that. Well, now I use the triangle inequality on this guy. And this is going to be part of my triangle inequality. And this is going to be part of my triangle inequality. So this is less than or equal to f of x minus f of xk in Rm plus the distance between g of x and g of xk in Rm. And by hypothesis, these guys are going to zero. Each of these guys is going to zero. This goes to zero. This goes to zero. So the whole thing is going to go to zero. That means that essentially, and of course this guy is always greater than or equal to zero, right? We know that. That means that as k approaches infinity, this guy gets squeezed closer and closer to zero, and it's going to vanish. It's going to vanish. And so that, that proves it. And you can do this for f dotted with g. It's a little more complicated, and it requires our, uh, uh, our angular formula for the dot product, right? But you can do this as well. And it's, it's, it's a really interesting exercise. So uh, conditional, conditional tombstone, if you believe me. Another, another really useful fact, right, that, that really kind of shows us exactly what continuous functions from Rn into Rm are doing. Well, theorem, and I'm not going to prove this, but you can, you can demonstrate it with the tools that you have if you wanted to. So let's suppose I have this function with components f1 up to fm. Well, then it's continuous if and only if each of the components from Rm into R1 is, I guess this is Rn, is continuous. So, so if this is continuous, then all the components are continuous, and if the components are continuous, then this is continuous. That's a really nice fact.